Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hello, Cindy. Today we're going to be talking about multi-tools, and we'd like to thank Alec Oz 58 for giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And this week we spoke to Randy from HomeGardenAndHomestead.com, and we got some holiday gift ideas. And you can now download a copy of our fourth book, it's called Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Book 4, on Amazon for only a buck. And you should check out the link to Snappy Grip. Why? Because it's just like a multi-tool. <laughs> you can use it as a grip for paint pails, create a grip for tarp, storage containers, and five-gallon buckets. Nice. Multi-tools were first recorded being used by the ancient Roman armies around 200 A.D., Wow. So these were very ornate, made out of metal. It had a spoon, a fork, a spatula, a spike, a pick, and a knife all in one tool, and the tools folded into the body. Hmm. In 1886, the Swiss Army started issuing folding knives to its soldiers. Mm -hmm. Then in 1889, the rifle they decided to use for the Army needed a screwdriver to take it apart for cleaning. Mm -hmm. So they wanted a multi-tool for their soldiers, and they hired Carl Elsener. He was a cutler in Switzerland to make a folding tool with a knife, a screwdriver, a can opener, and a reamer on it. Hmm. And in 1897, he put out the first patent for the Swiss Army Knife. Wow. So the Swiss Army Knife is a pocket multi-tool. An oscillating multi-tool is an electric tubular-shaped tool with a variety of blades that can be attached to the end. And these can be used to cut, to sand, and to scrape. In 1943, Homer Stryker developed an oscillating saw to cut through plaster casts without cutting through skin. <laughs> so the blade on a multi-tool has a very small side-to-side -side motion, and so it's going to cut through hard surfaces. Mm -hmm. But if it lightly contacts the skin, it just kind of wiggles the skin mm. rather than cutting it. Nice. In 1967, the Fine Company developed a new type of oscillating plaster cast saw, and they used this technology to develop the first multi-tool in 1985, for construction and automotive work, and it had multiple blades for different applications. Hmm. Multi-tools can be used for a wide variety of projects, and the blades are fairly small, only from around one to three inches wide. Mm -hmm. You can get blades for cutting through wood, plastic, metal, or tile. There's hooked blades for carpet or linoleum, carbide blades for cement board and grout. There's flat blades for scraping off caulk or adhesives. And then you can get sanding pads, and there's a couple of different shapes. Hmm. So if you plan on doing a lot of remodeling projects, a multi-tool is actually a really good basic tool to have around the house. Who oh, no. So one of the projects I've used a multi-tool on was at my mom's condo. They had a loose hinge on the main door coming into her building. Mm -hmm. And I figured just throw longer screws in the hinge. And mm -hmm. when I tried that, it just hit the brick mm -hmm. behind the jam. So then we had to do a video. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what I did was they had this really thick brick mold on the outside, so this wood molding around the jam, and it was screwed in place and caulked in place, and I just didn't want to try to take that off because I figured I'd end up damaging it. Mm -hmm. I used a multi-tool, and I... <laughs> so you worried about damaging it, so what did you do? Well, you I, cut I, into I, it? <laughs> right, right, right. But, but what's great about the multi-tool is you can really do a nice job. So above the hinge, this is on the outside molding, mm -hmm. I did a straight plunge cut into the molding and one a little lower than the hinge. And then I put on a different blade that's a scraper. And so I was able to just go right into the caulking where they had this very thick caulk. Mm -hmm. And I was able to pull this chunk out. So this section allowed me to slide a piece of wood behind the jam. I had now had nice wood for the screws to grab onto and fixed it. And now I just take that piece, I put it back in, I left the caulk on it, mm -hmm. put it back in, used a couple finishing nails to put it in place, and then we used a little clear caulk, and you almost couldn't tell mm -hmm. that anything was done. So a multi-tool... So you didn't get in trouble? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And if I would have used like a brown caulk, it uh -huh. would have even been better. <laughs> Multi-tools also do a great job of cutting up your door trim and jams if you're installing wood flooring, laminate flooring, or floor tile. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to take your flooring, you're going to set it right next to your trim, use that as a guide. You're going to put your multi-tool on top, and then you can just make a straight cut into it, 
and that way your flooring is going to fit underneath it mm -hmm. and you don't have to remove it off the wall and try to cut it. Nice. So it really makes it easy. And you can also use this to cut vertically if you're putting in new cabinets and you have to go into baseboard rather than removing the baseboard. Mm -hmm. You can use a multi-tool for cutting off shims when you're framing in doors and windows because they don't always snap off straight when mm -hmm. you're breaking mm -hmm. them by hand. The straight multi-tool blades are going to do the best job on plunge cuts. The rounded blades are going to give you more control for long cuts. And you can remove very thin pieces of wood by just using a straight edge, clamping it in place, and then depending on the depth, you're going to get the smoothest finish by making a shallow cut first, and then come back and go into that groove and then completely cut through it. Hmm. For projects where you're removing baseboard and trim and you don't want to mark up the walls or the trim, they have thin metal cutting blades that you slide behind the trim and just cut off the nails. Hmm. And that way the trim just pops off. The metal cutting blades are also great for removing old plumbing parts like a sink basket nut or a faucet retaining nut that's rusted in place. Mm -hmm. Or if you have toilet bolts that are rusted in place and you just can't turn them. Mm -hmm. And if you're working under a cabinet, I really like the multi-tools that have an LED work light so you can really see what you're doing. Oh, nice. If you're creating holes in the back of a cabinet for your drain pipe or shutoffs, you mm -hmm. can really make a precise cut, very easy to do. You can cut holes in wood decks for lighting. And the scraping blades are great for removing peeling paint or tile adhesives in small areas. And then if you have the bath accessories where they used to either glue it or caulk it in place, mm -hmm. those thin scraper blades are nice because you can get right behind the accessories and just pry them free. Mm -hmm. You can cut openings in drywall or cut out a section of drywall, let's say above a countertop, for example, and have great control. So you can put painter's tape all along the top of your countertop, rest the blade right on top of it, and just cut out a section precisely, mm -hmm. and then drop a new piece in. You don't have to worry about going too deep if you have electric or plumbing behind the wall, too. Hmm. If you have an old bathroom with failing or stained grout, there are blades to grind out the old grout so you can regrout. And that oscillating blade is going to give you nice control. It's going to create less dust than a rotating blade and much easier to do than using a grout saw by hand. Mm -hmm. And you can also use carbide blades for removing the loose mortar between bricks if you're repointing small areas. Mm. The sanding attachments use a hook and loop sandpaper, and these are great for getting into small, hard-to-reach areas. And the most popular shape is triangular for corners. Mm. When you're looking at multi-tools, you can get corded or cordless, and if you just plan on occasional use, a corded tool is probably the best choice, and you're generally going to get more power. With cordless, you need to use it regularly for the longest battery life, mm -hmm. and most lithium-ion batteries can't be stored unused for a year or more. It can actually damage the cells, wow. and you're going to get the best charge with temperatures between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of the manufacturers are recommending don't charge it if the air temperature is below 40 degrees or above 105. It can actually damage the battery. Wow. I mean, it's wild, huh? Mm -hmm. And at cold temperature, the battery actually charges at about half the rate hmm. as 70 degrees. Who knew? That's weird. So cordless requires more attention than corded, plus limited use time based on your battery life. So if you plan on using a cordless, I would have two batteries if you're doing a lot of projects. That way you can always have one charging. Mm. For corded models, compare the power cord lengths. 10 foot is a good length. A couple of the key terms, one is oscillation angle. So this is the amount of side to side movement and it's gonna vary from a little over two to a little over three. The higher the number, the faster or more aggressive it's going to cut. Mm. The lower the number, the more control you have over your cut. Another term is your oscillation rate. So this is the speed that the blade moves from side to side. So some tools are going to start from zero and go up a range. Some are going to have just a limited range from 8,000 to 20,000, for example, hmm. and that's oscillations per minute. And most pros are saying that's a good range to look for, 8,000 to 20,000, and you want it to go up to around 20,000 oscillations per minute. Hmm. I would also compare the size of the tool and how it fits in your hand. So I would go to a store and just pick up a few different styles. Why? Because the diameter is actually different. So if you have small hands, if you're doing large projects, a bigger tool can actually be uncomfortable if you're holding it all day. Hmm. An LED work light is always great, and the toolless blade change is a convenient feature. 
I would look at the attachments and the blades available and see whether you can use blades from other manufacturers. A universal adapter kit is nice because now it's easy to shop for blades. Mm -hmm. Also the kits, some come with a storage bag and a range of blades and they can be a really nice value because some of the individual blades can be expensive. Mm -hmm. And if you get one of these kits, you're going to have blades for projects you might not have even thought of. Mm -hmm. Some top-rated oscillating multi-tools, Fine, F-E-I-N, Dremel, Bosch, B-O-S-C-H, Rigid, Ryobi, R-Y-O-B-I, Works, W-O-R-X, DeWalt, Rockwell, Craftsman, and Chicago Electric has a very highly rated low-cost tool. Mm -hmm. And a few reviewers didn't like the Cordless Craftsman as well as the Corded, mm -hmm. but I've had really good luck with mine. Huh. And especially my dad used to always buy me Craftsman tools every Christmas. <laughs> the pocket multi-tools are generally built around a pocket knife. And the Victorinox Swiss Army Knife has been popular since World War II with soldiers. Mm -hmm. They had a hard time pronouncing Schweitzer off its Sears Messer, which means <laughs> Swiss officer's knife. Mm -hmm. So they just called it the Swiss Army Knife. Mm -hmm. And it's been on expeditions to the North and the South Pole, the Amazon, Mount Everest, and it was the official multi-tool for the crew of the space shuttle. Nice. A pocket multi-tool is going to be handy for a lot of projects around the house, work, camping, and hiking. Some of the top-rated multi-tools are from Leatherman, Gerber, Victorinox, Swiss Army, and a couple of companies just use their initials, S-O-G and C-R-K-T. Do you know what they are? What they stand for. So SOG is interesting. So that's short for Studies and Observations Group. This was a classified U.S. Special Ops unit that used a very unique combat knife in Vietnam. Hmm. And so the designer who started this company kind of paid tribute to that first knife. And now they have an amazing line of unique specialized knives and multi-tools. Hmm. And then CRKT mm -hmm. is the Columbia River Knife and Tool Company. To give you an idea of the different tools, the Leatherman Wave, it has 17 tools that folds up to 2.9 inches, fits in your pocket. It has heat-treated stainless steel knives, smooth and serrated edges, a needle nose pliers with a wider section in the middle so you can use it like a regular pliers. Hmm. You can use it for grabbing nuts and bolts. It has wire cutting knives at the end of the jaw. For It has wire strippers, a saw, spring action scissors, a ruler, a can opener, a bottle opener, Phillips, and slotted screwdrivers. It's craziness. <laughs> the SOG PowerLock 2.0 has 22 tools. It has pliers, crimpers, wire cutters, saws, files, multiple screwdrivers, scissors, and knives. Hmm. The Victorinox Swiss Spirit X is 4 inches long, folded, it has knives, screwdrivers, wire cutters, scrapers, a pry tool, a tape measure, pliers, can opener, a punch, a wood saw, a metal saw, a file, wire strippers, and it comes with a belt pouch. <laughs> and if you're shopping for a multi-tool, I would take a look at the websites from these companies. It is amazing, the variety of tools and configurations. They go anywhere from a very lightweight, thin knife with just like a screwdriver all mm -hmm. the way up to a full-blown toolbox that you can fold <laughs> up in your pocket. Well, that way you're going to get the tool that you actually need cause yeah. you're, instead of being limited by what they carry in the store. Because they have very specialized tools for even like skateboarding right. or bikes. They have you know stuff that's going to work or with... camping, fishing, hunting. Exactly, yep. There are also garden multi-tools. No way. So Flex Rake has a pocket gardener pocket tool, and this has a handheld bypass pruner and then there's also a weeder tool, a crevice tool for weeds, a smooth edge knife, and a serrated edge knife that folds up into the body of this. Mm -hmm. Kelvin tools, so it's K-E-L-V-I-N. They have multi-tools with 17, 23, or 36 tools in the handle. Hmm. So this is good for the house or your car. It has a knife, a level, a tape measure, a hammer, a flashlight, and like 20 different screwdriver bits. <laughs> A Chicago inventor has a company called Loggerhead Tools, and he has a multi-tool called Imix. It's I-M-M-I-X. Comes in two sizes. It has a self-adjusting wrench that fits a range of nuts and bolts. And in the padded handles, it holds 20 different screwdriver bits. Mm -hmm. It's made out of hardened steel with a lifetime warranty. 
And I had one of these, and my son took it with him to college. <laughs> a couple of unique multi-tools. So the company Lever Gear, it's L-E-V-E-R. They've got a tool card. So there's 40 tools in this punched out piece of metal. It's the size of a credit card. Hmm. You can actually slip it into your wallet. It also has a clip that you can clip onto it if you want to use it as a money clip. But it has screwdrivers, wrench openings for nuts and bolts, a box cutter, a bottle opener, and a can opener. Wow. And then CRKT, they've got a keychain multi-tool. It has a bottle opener, a chisel, screwdriver, and box wrenches. Hmm. Wokit, it's W-O-K-I-T, is a bike multi-tool. This is 28 tools for repairing bikes, so if you break down on the road. And it actually so has... What kind of bikes? Like a motorcycle or a bicycle? Bicycles. Oh. And it has a ratchet wrench. It clips to your belt or it fits into a small bike pouch. Hmm. And it's pretty amazing. For camping, the Crovel Extreme 3. It's C-R-O-V-E-L. This is a shovel multi-tool. So the blade of the shovel, one half is a flat edge that you can use for cutting. One side has a sawtooth edge for cutting. Hmm. It has a 14-inch hollow steel handle, so you can store stuff. You can put gear inside there. Hmm. It has a hammer, a crowbar at the head, an integrated nail puller, and 15 feet of paracord. <laughs> also for camping, Sheffield, is S-H-E-F-F-I-E-L-D, has a 12-in-1 multi-tool. It has an axe, a hammer, screwdrivers, wood saw, a fish scaler, a hook remover, a bottle opener, a ruler, and a file, all in one tool. <laughs> we spoke to Randy from Home Garden and Homestead.com, and he had some gift ideas. You talked to Randy. I just listened. There was a lot of talk of chickens. <laughs> Randy, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. You have some gift ideas for Christmas. Well, I do. I, I can fill out your entire gift list as long as your gift list is filled with gardeners and homeowners. How's that? <laughs> or if you've already bought for everybody, then these are some great things that you're going to want to get for yourself. Okay, great. So let's start with a cool pair of waterproof shoes. Okay. I have a, a pair of shoes from a company in California called Sloggers. And unfortunately for men, they only make shoes in black and brown. It's basic guy wear. Okay. But if you're a, a female, they make the coolest colorful shoes and boots for any kind of outdoor or waterproof use. Okay. Um, they have a, a pair of shoes and a, and a new hummingbird pattern that's really cool. They have shoes. If, you, if you're into horses, they've got horse patterns and prints. They've actually got a brand new one that has baby goats on it. One of the most popular things they did last year was they released some chicken prints. Slogger's shoes and boots are fabulous. And you, you can see them on sloggers.com. They've got some great colorful patterns. And I love the fact that the soles are made out of recycled materials. And to clean them, all you got to do is hose them off. $30 for the shoes and $40 for the boots. So it's a, it's a great value and they're just fun. Now, if you've got a, um, a hardcore gardener, like a dedicated vegetable gardener, or somebody that you kind of want to introduce to gardening, I like a, uh, a seed collection from Park Seed, and they call it their heirloom favorites, which is a pretty good start. I mean, that's a good name. Park Seed has been in, in the seed business for, what, like 150 years, and so they, they know what they're talking about. And um, over the years, they've had tremendous success with heirlooms and organics, and they track, you know, which varieties are the most popular. So they took 10 of their most popular heirloom vegetables and flowers, and they put it into one seed collection. So you get 10 packets of seed okay. for $24. It's a stocking stuffer price, and it's just a great way to introduce somebody to gardening or to just say, hey, here's a great idea. Grow all of these things next year and you'll have a fabulous garden because these are the most popular things that Park Seed sells and they've been proven by gardeners throughout the entire country. So, you know, there's everything from the Cherokee purple organic tomato to um, moon and stars watermelon. I don't even know what that is, <laughs> but I love that name. How can you go wrong with a moon and stars watermelon? I love the idea of this collection. 
Yeah, great, especially for a beginner, because I think you get a little confused or overwhelmed with the amount of choices. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and millennials like the idea of gardening, but they don't know how to get started. Right. I've got kids that are millennials, so I speak from experience here. They want to start and they want to do it, but they really hate to fail. So if you give them a collection of proven seeds, uh, it's a great way to get them started. Plus, they love the idea of growing food. That's their sweet spot. Right. And speaking of food... If, even even if um, you know somebody who's not a gardener, I love this idea, an Italian herb jar kit from Wayside Gardens. It is a complete growing kit. It has the uh, the mason-type jars. Okay. It's got the seeds. It's got the growing medium. It's got the fertilizer. It's sort of a hydroponic way to grow the big three Italian herbs, basil, oregano, and Italian parsley. You just set these jars up and fill them up with water and put the seeds in and then put them on a sun, sunny windowsill or someplace where it's, you know, light and bright. And so it's a great kitchen garden. Interesting. And anybody who appreciates cooking, any, anybody who has cooking as a hobby or just likes to, to cook with fresh uh, herbs, right. you don't have to have a, a backyard garden. You know, you grow them in your apartment or condo or whatever. So I really like that. And it really looks good on the windowsill because those jars look like canning jars, you know, so it's a kind of a traditional country look. Right. One of the things I also like is a couple of different tools for what I consider hardcore gardeners like myself, people who are going to go out there and dig in the, in the dirt. One of my favorite tools is from a little company in Wisconsin called Cobra Head. So the Cobra Head Weeder is a hand tool for digging in the dirt and digging weeds out of your garden. And it's been popular for a decade or so. And one of the things that company got as feedback from their customers is, I love your tool, but I'd really like a smaller version of it. You know, something for fine precision digging around, you know, vegetable seed, seedlings in the garden or even in, in flower pots and whatnot. And so they finally came out with a cobra head mini weeder. The blade actually looks like a little cobra head. That's where they got the name. Uh, and this is a smaller version. It fits in your hand a little easier. It fits in smaller hands way better. And it's it's a better precision weeder. And so I love this tool. Uh, I got one from the company this summer, and I've got the original one too. And I like the mini because it's smaller and lighter, and it's just better for, you know, like I said, that precision weeding when you, you've got established plants, you're just trying to dig around. Right. That's available at cobrahead.com along with the original tools that they've been making for the last few years. Okay. So those are things that I like. And one of the things that I really like, because I'm a, I'm a gardener, but I get tired of digging holes, especially when it's you know bulb season in the fall when you're digging a bunch of bulbs, or in the springtime when you're putting in bedding plants. So there's something called a power planter auger that I have fallen in love with. It's a giant drill bit that fits in your electric drill. And instead of digging a hole for a bulb, you just put the auger in and you use the drill and it drills a hole. And it's talk about a, a labor saving device. That's great. I like gardening. I mean, I like the work of gardening, but there are some days when you're planting 100 bulbs. Right. That's not any fun for anybody. So my go-to tool when it comes to you know planting hundreds of bulbs or a lot of bedding plants is now this power planter auger. And um, I love it. It comes in a bunch of different sizes depending on you know how big a hole you need to dig. Okay. You can find those on powerplanter.com. And, and all this stuff you can also find on, on our website, which is homegardenandhomestead.com. Okay, excellent. You know, we were talking about chickens a minute ago. Uh, in the context of the, the waterproof shoes, right. and I'm sure some of your listeners have chickens. I mean, backyard chickens are a big deal. And I, I was talking to you off the air. I'm actually living in a neighborhood that had a referendum about chickens, so I can now proudly say we're in a chicken-friendly neighborhood. Um, <laughs> which is, <laughs> I don't know how many people can say that. So are, um, are, do you get woken by the roosters? Well, no, no. See, that's just it. In a suburban type neighborhood, quite often it's the hens that are okay, but not the roosters. Right. So they don't allow the roosters? They don't allow roosters. In <laughs> that's funny. Which actually I'm thankful for because I don't have chickens and I don't want to hear anybody else's <laughs> roosters, you know. Um, I'd tolerate it. I, I think it's cool to have chickens, but maybe I should say we're in a hen friendly neighborhood. There you go. 
But there's a, a product that I really like for those folks that have chickens. Okay. Um, it's a flat panel heater um, from a company called Cozy Products. And it sort of looks like a flat panel TV, but chickens do not watch TV. So the good news is it's not a TV. It's a, it's a heating element okay. that puts out a, um, a very safe, there's something called an ETL certified uh, heater. It's a radiant heater. And so it just warms up the chicken coop in the, um, in the cold months. And uh, quite frankly, you could use it in, in a dog house as well. I mean, it's a keep your, your pets and your, your backyard chickens warm during the cold season. So I, I love that if you have animals that you're trying to keep warm. One of the things that, that I love about being a gardener is, you know, you, you're growing vegetables and flowers that you get to enjoy. Sometimes you want to bring those flowers indoors and, you know, put them on your kitchen table or whatever. Um, and we've all seen a million tall, skinny vases for, you know, long-stemmed roses or long-stemmed flowers like daisies and whatnot. But for flowers that just don't put out that long of a stem, there's a really cool jar flower holder, very country-looking and, um, and much shorter. For the kind of plants and cuttings and flowers, they just don't put out those big stems. And that's available from Wayside Gardens. And what I like about it is it's a cool look. And as a gift, it's a great presentation because it doesn't cost a lot of money. It only costs eighteen ninety five, But it's a really practical gift. And it looks very country and, I don't know, country chic in, in, a, in, a, in an old-fashioned way. All of this and a lot more are on uh, homegardenandhomestead.com if anybody wants to check it out on our website. So one of my favorite uh, holiday gifts is also holiday decor, uh, growing amaryllis bulbs because, um, man, the flowers are big and beautiful and showy. One of the coolest new developments is Jackson and Perkins has actually dipped amaryllis bulbs in wax. And so it's a self-contained unit. You don't even have to add water by sealing in the moisture that's already in the bulb. Uh, it just sprouts and grows during the season. Really? It's a great way for somebody who doesn't know how to do anything in terms of gardening or growing <laughs> or houseplants and, uh, you know, reliably kill anything that they try to grow. Um, this is foolproof. So I love that as a concept. So and, is it drawing moisture out of the air? Well, there's enough moisture inside the actual bulb because wow. the, the amaryllis bulb is so big that it has the energy, it has everything it needs to grow as long as it doesn't lose any of that moisture. And so by dipping it in wax, you create an environment where the bulb is self-contained and it grows all by itself. I've never heard of such a thing. Very interesting. Well, it's a cool idea. Yeah. And, and you can get those from Jackson and Perkins online. Interesting. Randy, if people want to learn more about your blog or learn more about what you do, where can they go? Well, if I was that person, I would go to homegardenandhomestead.com. It's all spelled out. And we've got most of the information we've talked about online already and a whole bunch more. And there's also a blog that you can follow. You can click on the little blog link. From the homepage, uh, you can also sign up for the, the e-newsletter. So that's a good way to stay connected with us. We've also got a Home Garden and Homestead Facebook page. We post uh, every day something new and cool for homes and gardens. Great. Well, I appreciate your time, Randy, and I'll put some information on your blog and your website in the show notes. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Those are some interesting gift ideas. Yeah, the website has a lot of great content. Do you have anything else to add? If you're shopping for an oscillating multi-tool, think about how often you're going to be using it to decide between corded and cordless. The oscillation angle around two is going to give you more control. Around three is going to give you faster cutting. The oscillation rate, 8,000 to 20,000 is a good range. If you have an oscillation rate that starts at zero up to 20,000, you're going to have the best control. I would look at the kits that come with storage bags and a wide variety of blades. They're usually a better value. And then make sure you're matching your blade to your project. With the pocket multi-tools, they come in a wide range of configurations, so I'd spend some time online comparing the styles and the features. Mm -hmm. Let's wrap this up. 
You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, iHeartRadio, and CastBox. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can download our home improvement books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. You can subscribe to that as well. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Dot com. You can follow us on Twitter at Fix It Podcast. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.